Hi, John Dixon here. I hope you're doing well. We're in between seasons at the moment, so it's a good time to go back through our catalogue of five seasons and see if there's anything interesting you might have missed. We're hard at work at producing season six. We've got some pretty cool topics. In the meantime, I'm going to be sending out a few of these brief singles over the coming weeks. Some I'll do myself and others I'll hand over to special guests, like today. By popular demand, I've asked Dr. Laurel Moffat back. She's been thinking about how to find life's melody in the middle of all the noise. And I'll be back at the end with a fun announcement. Thanks, Laurel. Like almost all school children in Sydney during our four-month COVID lockdown of 2021, my daughter was learning from home, which means, like many other parents, I was learning too. And the theme of each day was roughly this, math, then English, sometimes followed by science or history or art, but also always music. The musical pieces were set once a week. One week, it was the Carnival of the Animals. Another, it was the planets. And still another, the four seasons. My daughter loved each piece in turn, with one exception, Bach's Goldberg Variations. It's easy to see why a six-year-old might prefer to listen to the planets, or the seasons, or the animals. Each of these works presents a world that is easy to picture. Whether it's a system of planets, the seasons on Earth, or a zoological catalog. In contrast, the variations offer the listener a theme, the aria and then 30 variations or riffs on that theme, all in a single key, G major. There's nothing particularly concrete for the listener to imagine and hold in the mind. No elephant, no Jupiter or Venus. There's no storm to take cover from in summer or swirl of leaves in autumn. And yet each day of lockdown had me turning back to box variations. Some of the variations are easy to listen to, others are more like a tangled portion of a chain. They lurch at some points and glide at others. They aren't any one thing, they're in turn confounding, recursive, beautiful, playful, mournful, puzzling. They're a challenge to listen to, and pianists are quick to tell me that they're even more of a challenge to play, which makes me wonder, what does a piece of music composed almost 300 years ago 
have to do with life now. In order to make sense of the work as a whole, the listener must do one thing as she progresses through the variations. Remember the theme, or just the fact that there is a theme at all. The theme is what holds the work together and makes sense of every other moment in the work. To my ear, this is the musical equivalent of asking and answering the question, what's the meaning of life? Or is that taking Bach too far? The listener's experience is enriched by remembering to listen for the sounds of the theme in the variations. And in a similar way, our lives are richer for searching for the theme in the world beyond music, particularly of our own lives. It isn't always a comfortable question to ask, but it's one that's become a bit more familiar in this pandemic, especially in a lockdown a time when we may not be able to do the things we'd like to do, or go where we'd like to go, or see the people we'd like to see. For many of us, it's a time of loss instead of gain, a time of limitation and constraint rather than expansion. Sickness places constraints on our lives, and in a pandemic, this is especially so. In fact, there are so many constraints that it's easy to be distracted by the trills and arpeggios of vaccine mandates, mask wearing, the theater of the pandemic, rather than the fact at the core of all of this that we must acknowledge our own limitations, which, in a bitter nutshell, is the fact of our own mortality. We may fool our healthy selves into thinking that our own potential or the possibilities in life are limitless, but the pandemic asks us to look again and reckon with the reality of our limitations. And limitations in a pandemic lockdown can feel especially binding. I hear you ask again, what do the variations have to do with life and the fact of our own mortality? Maybe nothing, or maybe it gets right to the heart of it. Bach sets a constraint, the key of G major. He tightens it with a bass line. And then he asks us to sit there, where in 30 variations he proceeds to play with the limit he has set and reveal to the listener how much life may be found within it. He does this again and again, this coming home to the key of G, including in the prelude to the cello suites which is the theme that you hear at the opening and the close of this podcast. Yes, you can break the variations into parts and listen to each individually, as you might break apart an orange and eat the segments one by one. But like an orange, the variations are best understood together in the light of the theme. The variations are a bit like lockdown, a bit like life in a pandemic, a bit like life itself, when our favorite distractions are taken from us, our music in another key, so to speak. We may experience our lives day by day, piece by piece, and on strange days or in strange times, things may not seem to make much sense. But Bach reminds us that sometimes the best thing to do is to sit in the circumference of our own limitations, and in that discomfort, ask the question that is always worth asking ourselves. What is the theme? And how can I hold on to it in all of life's variations?
Finding the theme in the variations. I love it. Well, if you like the way Laurel thinks, writes and speaks, I've got some lovely news for you. Undeceptions is about to launch a spin-off podcast series with Dr. Laurel herself. It's called Small Wonders and, well, it's Laurel. It's short audio essays set in a beautiful soundscape. And it's all about the mending of things, how we can find wholeness in the rubble, signs of God in the chaos. There'll be plenty more to tell you in the coming weeks. And one way to keep track of the new things we're doing and planning is to follow our new Facebook page for the burgeoning Undeceptions Network. Just search on Facebook for Undeceptions Network and you'll find us there. That's where we'll share the latest news on Undeceptions, Small Wonders and a few other things we've got coming down the pipeline. See ya. An Undeceptions podcast.